How great, how how great, how great you stand. How great, sing with me. And how great, how great, how great is our God. How great, how great, how great, how great, how great, how great, how great is our God. How great, how great. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Genesis 8 Continuously mindful is Elohim of Noah and of all the animals altogether, every beast along with him in the ark. So he stills Elohim, winds over the earth, and he confines the waters. At that time he holds them back, the springs of the abyss, and the windows of the heavens he commands to cease their downpour from the heavens. In time they turn back the waters all over the earth. Calming and turning back, they begin to abate the waters at the end of fifty and one hundred days comes it to rest the ark in the month the seventh on the seventeenth day of that month upon the mountains of Ararat in time the waters they come to recede and abate until the month the tenth. On the tenth day of that month they appear the tops of the mountains. During that time it so happens at the end of forty days that he opens Noah the window of the ark which he constructed. At times he sends out a raven each time it goes forth and returns until dries up it the water upon the land. Then he sends out the dove away from himself afterward to discover if they are receded and vaporous the waters above the surfaces of the ground. But lo, could not find she the dove, a resting place for the sole of her foot. As a result, she returns to him, to the ark, because of the waters upon the surfaces of the earth. So he stretches forth his hand, and he takes her, and he brings her to himself into the ark. A while longer he waits, for seven days more. Then he proceeds to send out, again, the dove from the ark. This time she returns to him, the dove, toward the time of the evening. And look! A leaf of an olive tree torn off in her beak. Consequently he knows, Noah, that they are receded, the waters upon the earth. A while longer he waits, another seven days more, then he sends out the dove. From that moment never made attempt she to return to him again. In time it comes to pass, in the one and six hundredth year, on the very first day of that very first month, receded are the waters from upon the earth. In time he removes Noah, the covering of the ark. In that moment he looks and discovers drying are the surfaces of the ground. Days pass. In the month the second, in the seven and twentieth day of that month it was dried, the earth. One day he speaks 
Elohim to Noah to say, Come forth you from the ark, you and woman of you, and sons of you, and women of sons of you with you. All of the living creatures that are with you from all flesh, flyers and the beasts and every crawling animal, those that swiftly move on the earth, come out you and bring out them with you to allow to roam they in the earth, so that fruitful they and increase they upon the earth. And he comes forth, Noah, and sons of him, and woman of him, and women of sons of him with him. Every one of the animals, all of the reptiles, and all of the flyers, and every one that moves swiftly upon the earth, according to the species of them, they come forth from the ark. On that day he builds, Noah, an altar to Yahweh. Then he chooses from every species of beast the clean, and from every species of flyer the clean, and offers them up as burnt sacrifices on the altar. How he savors Yahweh, the aroma so pleasant and he affirms Yahweh from the deepest heart of him. Never shall I bring destruction again upon the ground for the sake of mankind, regardless of the conceptions of the heart of man, evil from his youth or not. Nor will I again endeavor to bring destruction upon every living thing in the manner in which I brought it forth. Furthermore, all the days of the earth, seed time and harvest, cold and warmth, summer and winter, day and night, never shall they cease. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. Our great is our God.